You know, when I was a kid, we had the cliche station wagon with the wood paneling on the side, you know? And we would take these like cross state trips to go on family vacations. And if you were lucky, you got to be in the very back of the station wagon with some of the luggage and stuff and, you know, have sleeping bags and blankets and it'd be a mess back there, right? And you'd have a couple toys. And when you're on the road, all of a sudden, those blankets could become like the rolling waves of the ocean or where monsters were coming up from underneath and you had to fight them or the folds of the sleeping bag could become a dark cave with a, with a dragon inside. And your imagination would just go crazy in the back of that station wagon, coming up with all these amazing stories. And then I was out here shooting and I just realized that, you know, I traded in the back of that station wagon for my studio, which could be anywhere around this house, because I'm using that same sense of imagination and I have that same sense of play. Capturing them on camera is the only difference right now. I'm Mitchell Wu. I'm a professional toy photographer based in Los Angeles, California. I like to shoot on these foam boards and they're actually, I think, for flower arranging, but they're really handy because it allows me to get the toys and put some wires in the toys and then easily stick them where I want. And if I want to reposition it, it's really simple to do. And it took me a while to figure this out. So hopefully somebody that's just starting toy photography will see this and they'll say, hey, that's a really good idea. It really is trying to figure out the story and the character. And then if you do that, you'll be able to like at least get a really, at least one really good shot out of it. You just have to figure out what that story is. For lights, I use these little LEDs. They're beautifully sized for toy photography, but I do usually like to um, throw some additional light on the characters to make them pop. Sometimes I'll throw some light behind them to give them a little bit of rim lighting to also help them pop. I basically am a one-person show, so I do shoot with a remote shutter release, which is this. It allows me to be on the set right over here, creating the practical effects, while at the same time, you know, firing the camera. The greatest assistant, pretty cheap too. I'm just gonna stir up the dirt to really kind of push the story and enhance the action that I'm trying to portray. And that action obviously is the queen coming up on these two orcs as they're trying to attack and basically just pummeling them backwards. As you can imagine, if these guys were real, they'd be flying backwards. Um, their feet would be kicking up dirt as they're leaving the air. Same with Kawiki, the elk. He's jumping or rearing up on his hind legs. And so I could imagine that also would create some dirt and debris underneath him. And the way that I do that is with uh, just your basic everyday can of compressed air that you use to clean your computer or keyboard or whatever. That's probably a keeper right there. The thing about toy photography is if you're looking at it or even if you're creating it, it's, it's a good escape. It really is. I mean, it's like any good entertainment. Toy photography, to me, is really about the story, and after that, it's a bunch of problem solving. You know, if I know I want to create an explosion, I want to have him busting through something that looks like a wall. Once I know that, then it's just a matter of figuring out how am I going to do that. This looks pretty cool. Dude definitely has anger issues. I often think I'm like Sid from Toy Story, who's always like tearing toys apart and blowing them up and ripping their limbs off. He'd be proud of me. I knew I wanted to create something with fireworks because it's um, super exciting. One of my favorite uh, practical effects because who doesn't like blowing off fireworks? It's so fun to shoot toys 
that you have a personal connection to. And for anybody that's starting, that would be something that I totally recommend because you're gonna just, you're gonna love it and that's gonna come through in the final image. If somebody's looking at me and the journey I've been on, I hope that they would take away that anything is, anything is possible because up until 2015, I had no idea toy photography existed. I didn't even start shooting toys until I was in my 50s. And I built a really incredible career in my 50s from scratch, basically. You know, you don't have to be stuck on one path your entire life. You can switch paths. You can take different directions. You have to take some risks here and there. So I, I highly advocate taking risks. That 10-year-old kid, when I first started, you know, he was, a, he was, he was kind of deeper inside, but now that I've been doing this for a while, he's like right under the surface of my skin. He can come out anytime. <laughs>